How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and I am in a pretty good mood for someone who might have just found out that they cannot reach their goal this year. My goal was to save up and maybe buy a house, which would be great, but turns out you kind of need to establish some sort of credit for that and uh, the, the couple credit histories that I do have might not be sufficient, so all that means is daddy's got to buy some more cars and i already have one in mind and i think it will do the trick for making my credit look a little bit more juicy so i want you guys to go ahead and guess in the comments i'm not going to give you any hints i'm not even going to tell you guys if you're correct but guess in the comments what car i kind of want to buy keep in mind it does have to hold some value you know obviously enough to build some credit and show that i have some decent credit history and i could pay off a pretty expensive loan so that's your only hint i'm going to give you anyways today i'm going to do subscriber build battle even though i sound like i'm in a good mood right now i think it'd be funny or entertaining to kind of be a dick or be a little bit rude when i'm looking at these cars you guys seem to like it when i'm like a little bit of an asshole so we'll just do that this episode i'll just be an asshole so don't take any offense to it. It's all just exaggerated over the top. Let's dive right in. For those of you that don't know how subscriber build battle works, pretty much I get handed a car like most high schoolers do, just like this FRS probably was handed to the owner of this guy. But anyways, but that's besides the fact. I get handed a car and I have to decide if I want to keep it or trade it for the next car. Uh, pretty much like a little head-to-head -head style showdown. I can only use what I see in the photos to kind of make my opinion. So it's, it's not really like a head-to-head -head race because this BRZ wouldn't even be, you know, classified. It's so fucking slow. But anyways, that's pretty much it, and I cannot keep the car for the full episode because that would be cheating, and no FRS or GT86 would ever win. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm handed a GT86, FRS, BRZ, same shitbox, no matter what, just different badge. I'm handed that straight out of high school. This is like the perfect high schooler car. Looks fast, will impress all of the girls, but is uh, really fucking slow. So your insurance company is gonna really like it. And your mom and dad, I mean, it's a four cylinder. Sure, son, you could, you could take this out. Don't worry, I don't have to worry about you speeding in this one. It's a perfect car for a high schooler. Every time I see these, I just, I just think of a 16 year old kid who's really spoiled. Anyways, let's see what this uh, GT86 FRS piece of shit is gonna go up against. <laughs> this thing? <laughs> The Honda Civic with the park bench on the back? I mean, come on. I mean, uh, okay, okay. The hood dump exhaust is a little bit intriguing, and I do kind of like the, the cut fenders. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, I'll, I'll give give some respect where respect is due. See the intercooler, too? I don't know. I think that FRS has a solid battle cutout. The FRS does look a lot better. Don't get me wrong. It's a good-looking car. It's just really fucking slow. But this Honda Civic, I mean, I've had a lot of fun in Project WAP, and, uh... <laughs> Boosting your car and making it the ultimate sleeper is uh, really fucking enjoyable. It is so fun surprising and shocking other car owners. Being able to keep up with them with, with what they thought was a $2,000 car, keeping up with their $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 car, it is so much fun. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and scrap this GT86 really quick, and we are going to take the newly beautiful Honda Civic. I'm a fan of sleepers. You know, they win me over. But let's see what the sleeper has to go up against. Okay, I can't even be mean to this car. This car is just too damn clean. Like, I, I know I said I was going to be a dick to this thing, but, I mean, you guys try to think of an insult for this thing. It's, it's really hard. It is a really nice car. Like, look at this thing. This is a driver's car right here. This car, it's sitting at my ideal ride height, my ideal wheel and tire setup. Like, it's not asking to rub. This thing, you can tear through canyons, if you're careful, and you can have a lot of fun in it. So, uh, pff, fuck that Honda Civic. I mean, it seems like I'm just switching off real quick, but... Bye-bye, Honda Civic. MR2, you are my love. MR2 versus badass Dodge Demon, though? I don't know. Drew, that's not a Dodge Demon. That's a V6. Good eye, Bobby. Good eye. I feel bad for whoever the hell is modding this thing or doing this. Like, I just picture you pulling out your paycheck and lighting it on fire. I, I mean, I kind of know the feeling. You know, I've wasted a whole lot of money on the three-valve I'm building, but at least that thing goes fast. This thing is slow as shit. It's a, you made it slower. You made your V6 boat slower. I don't know how you would manage to do that, but I guess putting boat anchors as wheels is one way. I don't understand why anyone would willingly do this to their car, but at the same time, I do. Like, I, I get why you would do it to a V6, because you don't really want to slow down the cool Hellcat, but at the same time, you're just going to get laughed at because you're doing it to the V6. Like, it's not as cool at that point, because it's a fucking V6. Yeah, I'm keeping the MR2. If you own this boat, just drive it straight into the water. <laughs> oh my god, the first thing I see is this fucking like lanyard coming out of the damn grill. Like that's that's not a tow hook. That's not even like a towing spot. That's that's your upper grill. What do you Hey guys, I know nothing about cars. Look. Looks like you have maybe an aftermarket muffler system, stock wheels, stupid stickers, and yep, your fucking lanyard sticking out. It's like your graduate. What does it even say? 
remove before flight that doesn't even make any sense if you, it's obviously not a toe strap but whoever this is just has zero taste in how to make a car look good that has to be the tackiest thing you could do to your car i'm keeping the mr2 you'd be a fool to drive this all right well we got a what looks like a 90s 325i okay it's sitting nice and low i mean it doesn't look too practical but it's sitting pretty low i see a nice three-piece wheels on holy moly holy bejesus are you serious apparently it's an m50 b30 stroker build crammed into this 325i very unassuming to say the least mr2 you have a hard battle to fight okay this car doesn't look like 100 percent clean and mint like the mr2 but i mean when you open up the hood and you literally have no more room to stuff it in when you're balls deep in the engine like that i don't know mr2 i'm sorry like i don't think you can win this battle mr2 you and i had a good run and i think if you were up against another car you would have held out longer but this thing is just really nice the exterior looks pretty plain and simple you got like a nice matte gray wrap or whatever's going on and it's in pretty good condition but i mean that right there dash money right there all right yeah we're taking this let's see who this 325i sleeper goes up against ls3 6.2 v8 miata hmm i wonder what i wonder what that means i wonder why he would put that in the background oh my god what's with people in sleepers this episode like damn I, I thought the last thing was hard, but we put a beautiful MR2 against that sleeper build, and now we have an LS3 Miata. NA too, not the shit NB or NC. NA. Beautiful. And look at it, like the exterior too. Minty as fuck. Like, look at it. Come on. Like, I can't be the only one stroking it right now to this car. Like, this. God. This thing is absolutely drop dead beautiful. Now, the question is, which one would I rather die in? Because with both of those engines and both of those cars, you're pretty much just driving around a casket. The LS3 Miata, that looks absolutely just perfect in my mind. That's, I mean, perfect amount of camber if I were to do camber. Beautiful wheel setup, nice over arches. I mean, ducktail, everything. Or the M50 B30 Stroker build on the 325i. I mean, this is, this is the most unassuming sleeper I think you can have right here. Like, I don't think I've ever seen one of these, like quick but then again unassuming miata i mean if i saw a stanced out miata like that beautiful wheel camber fitment everything i wouldn't i wouldn't expect an ls3 damn i'm honestly on the fence about this oh this might hurt a lot of people but i think i'm gonna keep the bmw i think i am like just as what it is like a sleeper build i, I think I'm, i just i'd like this more i'm sure the miata is a whole lot more fun and it probably feels like you're gonna die every time you fucking pedal to the metal but oh damn it's so hard you know what nah i'm gonna change my mind miata i mean just the exterior of the miata is way cleaner and the v8 i mean you can't go wrong okay miata you won i'm sorry i'm sorry i ever doubted you i love you and i'm sorry <laughs> why why am i picking only good cars oh we have like the hard we're, we're, we're in the meat of it right now like th these are the hard like top tier cars of the episode we got an, an s15 sylvia right here oh my god oh my god come on man how how are you gonna pin up the ls3 miata against this it's, how how like it's all right so i gotta find some things that i don't like about this so i can like maybe stick to the miata but at the same time it just it looks so fucking perfect we got a little ding right here the rear fitment is an a1 it's not as flush as you know the miata you can see it's a little tucked Got a little duck tail on the back. It is paint match though underneath the hood. Oh my god. Why you do this to me? You know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with my gut instinct. I think the LS3 Miata beats this out. I think it does. I think the LS3 Miata, for what it is, I mean this would probably grab more attention in America, but I think the LS3 Miata I would have way more fun in. And for me, it's about fun. It's not about grabbing attention. This is a cool car, don't get me wrong, S15 is dope as hell, but Miata, I'm all I'm all I'm all about that fun, man. Miata wins again. And I could already confirm that the Miata is going to beat whatever shitbox this is. I believe this is an Acura TL. Apparently, it's a twin turbo show car. I, I can't confirm if it's twin turbo. Like, I see what looks like two spoolie snails underneath the hood, but they also look like those hella horns. So, if it is a twin turbo car, more power to you. I mean, he said it was, so I kind of got to take his word for it. But at the same time, I mean, they look like turbos, but that just looks like you have... No Where's your intercooler? where is it you have no intercooler it looks like anywhere like i don't know where you'd get your air from 
And also, I mean, where where's your traction? Like, you can't really combine show car and race car. They just, they don't mix because a lot of show car is form over function and a lot of race car is function over form. Like race cars don't have super flush and super perfect fitment because you can't. Shit rubs if you're going 120, 130 miles an hour. And if you're rubbing going that fast, your tire might explode or something might get caught or, you know, it's not good for everything. If this is a twin turbo show car, it's dope, but it's not for me. Miata still wins. Okay, if the Miata beats out the next car, then we have to hit the mystery box. And what, what even is this? What? What? Oh, okay. I know what it is. It's a Miata. We got a Miata versus a Miata. And apparently this is called the pit crew Miata or the pit crew body kit on the Miata. I don't know how I feel about it. It looks like the Miata is a little bit depressed. Like maybe it's like some classic Japanese style or something, but the headlights sit really low and they're like hanging to the floor like an old man's nutsack. I don't know. My buddy uh, MK4 Zach had one for a while and I never saw it in person, but I think I told him straight up, like, it's pretty fucking ugly. It's not for me. This one has a double decker wing on it. I think he said in the email that he removed it, but I see it in the photo, so I'm going to count it. It's clean, but I don't think it beats LS3 Miata. This is something that you pull up to like a Cars and Coffee in and like have some kids start stare at it and wonder what the fuck it is, but LS3 Miata wins. We got to hit the mystery box. We got to see whatever we get. And whatever we get, you know, whatever. Hopefully God is, is nice to us. All right. Our next car is... Fuck. We should have took the pit crew Miata. Now we got whatever the hell this thing is. I don't even know what car brand this is. It's a squiggly line. It's the squiggly line car brand with the mud flaps and the white wheels. Don't forget about that wing, though. That wing is needed for all that downfall. And the fucking claw marks in the reflective tape. Damn, this is like a classic 2016 car build. We got the reflective tape out. I remember on my V6, I wanted to do the reflective tape so bad. Oh, I'm so happy I didn't. I am so happy I didn't. I mean, I did some pretty bad shit, like neon and shit here and there. Not like underneath the whole car, but I am so happy I did not do reflective tape on every body line. That, that would have been pretty embarrassing. But anyways, this is our next car. We don't really get to choose if we get to keep it or not. This is our next car. We'll say the other Miata blew up, so... Or we wrecked. Whatever. Either or. Up to you. Let's see what we go up against next. Oh. The battle of the two shit boxes. We have whatever the hell the squiggly line car is against the fucking 328i. <laughs> like, it's not anything cool. It's, it's not 335i. It's a, it's a murdered out 328i. I think the email said it was making a whopping 272 horsepower. Wow. I feel like I have farts that put up more power than that. It, this is a hard one because, I mean, this is a base model 328i trying to make it look cool. And this is a piece of shit trying to make it look cool. So they're both about on the same level here. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, at least for this, you can kind of say it's maybe it's for jokes. But this is this is serious. That, that might be even worse. Like, it looks cool. I mean, but at the end of the day, it's a 328i. The owner knows it's a 328i too because he debadged it. He was embarrassed. He didn't want to rock that 328i, but you could tell because of the dual tip exhaust side by side. 335s have them spaced out. One on the left, one on the right. We all know that. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I could I could choose this car for the memes or I could choose this car and be logical, but I think I'm going to stick to the memes. Fuck the Beamer. Fuck the 272 horsepower. You can lick my ass. All right. Blue squiggly line versus 350z. Uh, okay, obvious answer, 350Z. 350Z wins. Okay, 350Z versus Porsche, classic Porsche. It's a Porsche 928S, and uh, it has, like, the really weird pop-up headlights. They don't pop, like, up like a traditional headlight. They go, like, the other way. They kind of, like, flip forward, which is really weird. The 350 is clean. It's a weird color, and it looks like it's got, like, Volk TE37 reps, but for the most part, it's not bad. It's, it's not the worst car ever. I don't know if I like like the guacamole shit color, but the TE37 reps, I mean, for what they are, I mean, they're good looking wheels because they're fake TE37s, but at the end of the day, they're fake TE37s, and you got to hear that for the rest of your life. This thing is on offer up specials. Ah, fuck. I'd have more fun in the 350Z. This is a cool looking car, and I'm sure like it would like, you know, get some attention, but again, I'm not all about that. I'd rather have fun, so... 350Z on the fake TEs. Uh, you're my new car. All right. I think this is the last contender. 350Z versus RX-7 FC. And looking at one like this. Is that a Supra wing? It fucking almost looks like one. 
Looking at one like this, it's a little bit more depressing. In Forza, they look a lot cooler. Like, maybe it's because I have, like, the Rocket Bunny kit on it in Forza, but the FCs in Forza look sick as fuck. In real life, though, uh, I don't know. Like, they're, they're kind of unassuming and bland. They look a lot like uh, MR2s almost. And I still think I would like to own one one day, not with the rotary in it, because I want to actually go fast, but... I feel like it wouldn't be a bad car to own. Like, there's there's a lot of options out there to make them look sick. Like, I think Rob has one at the Sideways Shop, and he has, like, a 1.5 Jay-Z in it. It's his drift car, and it looks dope as hell. So maybe I'm just used to staring at that. But, nah, I mean, again, would get attention, but I don't care about that. I'd rather have the 350Z. No point in owning a car if it doesn't even hit 100 miles an hour. What the fuck is the point of that? How long do you think it would take this FC to hit 100? Like what? Like one to two oil changes or something? Probably. That's why we're sticking with the 350. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Some of the highlight cars from this episode in my mind are the MR2, obviously, one of the cleanest cars of the episode. The Sleeper 325, even though it was very short-lived. LS3 Miata. I mean, come on. You knew it was going to come back. And this bad boy who beat out that BMW. Yeah, fuck the BMW. Anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you want to submit your car to my Gmail, send it to me at drewpeacock.clips at gmail.com. Subscribe to see more videos like this one. And until next video, peace.